Hey everyone, Tim with the Word of Life Church, where our pastor is the Reverend Junior Mount. As always, on behalf of Pastor Mount, the congregation, and myself, I want to offer you an open invitation to come out and be with us for service. Amen. Another beautiful day here in East Tennessee that we had. Uh, plenty of sunshine. Uh, started out cold, but hey, afternoon warmed right up. <laughs> Man, uh, had a good day and uh, we just thank the Lord for it. Amen. Thank the Lord for each and every day that he gives us and uh, just uh, thank the Lord for the beautiful weather. Amen. I just, just love, you know me, love, I love the sunny days. <laughs> so brother, you say that all the time. Well, I do. I thank the Lord for the beautiful sunny days that the Lord gives us. Amen. Getting ready to enter into winter and uh, you know we have plenty of those gray kind of rainy and Sometimes it was snowy and days and the sleet and everything. And it's just like, oh, I can't stand those days. But remember, and to remind myself too sometimes, it's a day the Lord has made. We, have, we rejoice and we're glad in it, you know. So, you know, that's something we have to re remind ourselves. Amen. So, you know, we're not above, not above having to remind ourselves of these sometimes these small things and it is no small things or a small thing that the day uh, that the Lord gives us uh, another day you know because could be a lot worse amen had to go out and run an errand uh, with my brother today and heard a siren and looked and as we drove over looked and saw an ambulance over in the parking lot of a or a little local Walmarts and uh, you know in the parking lot someone apparently something was going on I don't know maybe who knows what was going on so I mean you never know you, you just never know what's what's going to happen you know so uh, uh, we try not to uh, take for granted and I think a lot of us do we do we take for granted some things and you see sometimes uh, the people that are a lot worse off than you are you know, if you're upright, <laughs> walking, uh, you know, straight up walking, still have strength in your body, and you're you're relatively healthy, uh, you tend to take it for granted a lot of times. Uh, but the Lord will remind you. I have often found that that He will remind you. He will put somebody, someone in your path, and a lot of times and <laughs> probably a lot of you will agree with me but when that happens you, you, you will feel about that big and I've had to ask for forgiveness before I said Lord forgive me for feeling that way forgive me for thinking that way for having that frame of mind because I'm truly blessed after seeing some people whoops knock the table and ended up praying for that person that I see. Because of the situation that you see that they're in. And just realizing that you're not. So that happens. And we think so we thank the Lord for all the blessings that he bestows upon us and all the things that he's doing amen that he's done that he's in the past and doing now and that he's going to do and just most of all we thank him for his salvation amen uh, most of all we thank him for that because <laughs> that's the thing that we should wake up first thing in the morning thank you Lord for the day you give me most of all thank you for saving my soul thank the Lord for salvation because it's the greatest thing it's the greatest thing you'll ever have and achieve in the, this life because once you close your eyes in death down here you have better you, you better made your arrangements I'm not talking at the funeral home either you better made your arrangements for eternity one of only two places as I say many, many times, when you're born, you have started your eternal 
existence. Amen. And one of two places. That's it. That's just that. You know, <laughs> it's as simple as that. One of two places you're going to go. There's no, no, no reincarnation. Sorry, your religions that believe in that. Sorry. But the Holy Word of God tells us. You know. Uh, it's appointed unto man to once to die and after the, that the judgment amen so I want to be found on the right side <laughs> of that judgment amen to have accepted the substitutionary death amen of the Lord Jesus Christ he stood in my place and took my place and took your place amen on that cross amen that we wouldn't have to willingly amen how many of us could say that we could do that well none of us even if we'd be willing to die for somebody might help save their life down here there's no way <laughs> that hallelujah you'd save them for eternity and do what the Lord Jesus did for us amen so we thank the Lord for that. Amen. See how you get in that frame of mind? See how it started out? It's, you're sitting there thinking of self and being kind of self-centered. You see somebody way less fortunate than you are. And then it leads into all that. Thinking all that. You know what? That puts you in the right frame of mind. It puts you to where you're praying for that person. Maybe even to the point in some different situation helping a person out like that. Now some people, you know, are just having problems like that and you know, it's not that type of situation, but some people are I'm talking about like, you know, in a homeless type of situation or that uh you know, maybe uh, we're talking about you know like substance abuse and have become you know in in a, in, a, in a situation like that, which is you know a great that's uh, going on quite a bit right now. We'll say we'll just say it that way. Uh, that's one reason that I another one another one of the reasons I put the suicide prevention lifeline because. Uh, there's a, a couple that I watch and uh, we're going to be going to the book of Galatians today but I just want to kind of get this out here while it's on my heart uh, a couple that I I follow well I can't say I really follow I'm not subscribed to them but I kind of watch their videos off and on on YouTube and, and they they help people they have kind of like online uh, they do uh the, the guy does like a podcast because he's an ex he's an ex drug addict and he helps people and gets people to resources that helps that 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 help them get clean and uh, you know that, uh, and uh, somebody relapses he, he he helps them as best he can and uh, the, uh, the girl she's the same way and you know she uh, does music and uh, you know she uh, she gives the Lord glory for it. Now, you know, it's not a lot of what you would say, really. That wouldn't be what you would call, or what I would call, it in the charismatic sense. Because they, you know, they, in some cases, let some, some swear words, <laughs> cuss words go. But, uh, they do help people, and, you know. That, that's not saying I, I approve of some things, but you know what? They're going to the bat for a lot of people, where some people in these churches would, wouldn't even give to the time of day to help these people. Amen. They just say, well, they're drug addicts. You know, they, they're going to do their own thing, and they're not going to, you know, and 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 turn somebody away. 
so just some of those things that you think of see how something small like that that happens in your life something like that when you think about something like how it's spring how it spreads out and so many little tendrils and areas of thought when you see something like that so especially during a time like this with everything that's happened this year with the holiday season coming out and everything and now is definitely a time when we as the church can help and be effective now no uh, I hope I don't turn anybody away from this no program is going to be the end all be all help Christ is the answer amen save them to the uttermost amen God can take all that away never have a problem ever again seen it her testimony to that to get clean and never turn back to any of it and never have any withdrawals you know one day in it next day not and never have a problem that's the power of the true and the living God that's the power of Christ Jesus in a person's life amen now, like I said, I'm not downing anybody, not downing, you know, if it's, but some of these programs, there's other things behind these programs that's not good. Uh, not, there's some of them that are not Christian programs, we'll say, we'll say it that way. Amen. Uh, so, just kind of a random thought for the night. Uh, because, like I said, you you see, never put yourself in a place and never think more of yourself more highly than you ought to. Because it could be very well you. It could be real me in a situation like that. Uh, having trouble uh, or having something happen a life-changing, a life-altering experience, a sickness. I'm not even just talking about drugs or anything. I'm talking about a, a sickness or something like that. Because you know this life is, you know, uncertain. You know, sin is is running rampant. The the the, the evil one is running rampant in this world right now. So you know. Let's go ahead and say, today is the day of salvation. Amen. Call on the Lord while he may be found. Amen. While that hand of grace is still being extended. Amen. If he's drawing you to an altar of repentance, please do not turn him away. There'll be a time when that hand of mercy is no longer extended. And that's it. Amen. Seek him while he may be found. Amen. Because, <laughs> because heaven, the new heavens, new earth, it's going to be too, it's going to be all oh, too, too glorious, too, it's going to be good, too good to miss. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. We're looking forward to it. Amen. In all these days, it's going to be a reality. Amen. We're going to see it with our spiritual eyes. Amen. Not these eyes. We're going to get changed in the moment, the twinkling of an eye. Amen dead in Christ are going to rise first and we that are alive and remain are, are going to be called up to meet the Lord. Amen. It's going to be glorious. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, let's get this uh, I mean out of the way as it's no big deal or anything just the other things here. run to rescuecom It's R-U-N, the number two rescue altogether dot com. It's a Christian non-profit organization helping victims of sex trafficking they have a this is a website. And they have a mailing address, and they you know they so they are a Christ-centered uh, organization. Have social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, email. Uh, but I will give you their phone number. 
888-224-6062. But I'll, like I said, go to their website, read what they've got on there, check that out. Especially if you know or know of anyone that might need any of that, any of those resources. And uh, uh, you wouldn't believe how much of a problem that uh, that is. And uh, like I said, it uh, it goes further than that, as we talked about. Also, want to give this out as well. From the Department of Justice website, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, 1-800-843-5678. That, that bears looking to because it has so much, so many more things about it. Amber Alert link, uh, International Parental Kidnapping, Searching for Missing Children link, FBI Parental Kidnapping, <laughs> Federal Resources for, I mean, I mean, it's a lot of stuff on there, so look at that as well. Uh, National Suicide Prevention Lifeline website 1-800-273-8255 and uh, you can give that uh, out as well just in case you know someone may be in need of it as well just in case I mean you know like to always give out any resources that may uh, be of help to someone because you know as we say some people may not it may be almost there by your witnessing and everything but uh, you know this may get them help to a point that it may get them to where you're able to work with them uh, because they may be you know to the point where they you know, are right, right now at a point where they're just they're fighting against you know, it's like, oh, no, I don't want to, I don't want, don't want any of that religious talk or anything like that, you know, but they'll talk to someone here, but maybe at a point soon, the Lord will touch their heart, and they will be ready. So we want to give every help, every resource possible to be able to uh, help, because this is not, suicide is not the answer, amen. Uh, salvation is the answer. Amen. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Save you, set you free. And, you know, as I've said, uh, the, only, the only way to go, because one of two ways. The alternative is certainly not the way to go. Amen. As the Bible said, the hell was made for the devil and his angels. Amen. If we go, if we, if we go as an intruder. Amen. And uh, it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. Uh, but we know that there's going to be a lot, a lot that's not going to. Uh, we don't rejoice in that. We don't. But uh, if God's word says it, we have to accept it. If we believe the word of God, amen, we have to accept it. Because God's word is truth. Amen. Amen. Uh, Book of Galatians today. Amen. Book of Galatians. Chapter 5. And actually we're going to be... No, actually, let's go to uh, let's go to, uh, Ver or to Galatians three first. <laughs> I'm, uh, got getting my my numbers mixed up. <laughs> uh, ADHD's kicking in there. <laughs> Galatians three and verse one. Amen. So let's read. It says Galatians three and verse one. It says very well known scripture. I'm sure. Heard. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Plainly set before you. Amen. Plainly set before us, as our preacher, as Brother Junior said one night, and 
believe you said it before, but you know, it's one of those things that stick in one of those phrases, one of those sentences that stick in your head. And uh, not that not that other things <laughs> rather it's doesn't stick in mind, but one of the things that one of those that really sticks out there. Uh, you know, and there's been enough preaching been done over the years and still going on that right now could save the world just by the right now even on YouTube that's the, that's been put out there that's recorded uh, that's by tape by CD by you know that's on every Sunday enough gospel that's been preached that if a person listened to it and believe in the spirits drawing them to the altar of repentance they could be saved if people will only believe and give heed, amen, and open their heart, you know, the Spirit of God, you know, take out that heart of stone and, and, and replace it with a heart of flesh, you know, that the Lord can touch, amen. But we're allowing this world and the things therein to bewitch us, amen. In many's in the end, in the end, <laughs> tongue tied in a different link. In the end, here, uh, bewitchment is getting stronger and stronger each and every day. Things are going on, uh, not getting not getting political, but look at what's going on with this current election. People don't care, people they don't care if what happens. If it's if it's by cheating, if it's by a lie or whatever, people don't care anymore. They people want what they want through the lust of their flesh, the lust of their eye, to the pride of life. Amen. That's how people walk to the tune in this world and how they want things. Amen. They want things to be civilly or civil. We'll see. Civilly, civilly. <laughs> Think about that for a minute here. Uh, uh, to, to be lawfully as far as man's laws will go that route uh, to be okay for man to say it's okay if you do that because you know lawfully you're okay to do that by law by man's law it's okay if you do that people want that in there and installed and written on the book saying by law I'm not going to get in trouble to do this not worried about what God says amen not worried about what's written in heaven not worried about what the commandment said the law of God said what the Lord Jesus said no we're too bewitched amen we want to know what man we want to be ruled by man oh we don't want to live under God anymore get us a king Huh? <laughs> get us the king to rule over us amen uh, so we can be like these other nations that are being ruled by king amen that's why people oh my goodness why the, <laughs> they want the things that they're wanting right now to be passed by law why they're trying to lower the penalties for all these drug uses why they're getting trying to get certain drugs passed by law that it's okay for you to take they're getting certain things oh boy how to put this thing uh, shall we say well let's just say it pedophilia trying to get it passed to where it's okay if you do it pa to even uh, even at an early age saying it's okay if you do it by the law of man it's okay it's a sick sick it's sickos and other things as well What's coming next? Bewitchment going on. The Lord knew this was coming. The the the, the God knew this was coming because sin, you know, when it started, it's going to bring forth at the very end. It will bring forth death. In some cases, physical death, but always spiritual death. Amen. started in the garden the lie it's went across the, all the way over it infected the entire world amen down to, to right here in the US 
we don't want to be ruled by God, His laws, by this Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father. Give us a king that will let us do what we want to. Because we want to live by the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Because look at us, we are men and women. We can shake our fist at God and He won't do anything. That's people's thoughts nowadays. Where is this God you're talking about? I can curse him right now. I can say, oh, if, if I'm doing wrong, oh, you know, God, if there's a God, let him strike me dead right now with lightning. And they'll sit there with this smirk on their face. They only knew what they were saying. They better be glad that God is rich in mercy amen and long suffering amen said that back in the Old Testament days in the days when the law was indeed in effect in, in the days of Israel and everything they might have got what exactly that they asked for but we're under grace amen and God is long-suffering and realizes that we need we needed a Savior because he saw he knew he knew all this was coming the Lord Jesus told us all this was coming we read the Word of God we knew this this virus these things this this plummeting into the depths of sin and degradation was coming We knew this bewitchment was coming. Amen. Also in the churches. Just have good morals. Does Christ understand? Because Christ was just a good He was, yeah, sure, he was the son of God. And he, but, but you know, he smiles on you if you have good morals and everything. He must be born again. Amen. No continuing in sin that grace may abound. <laughs> God forbid. So what do we have now? The bewitchment continuing. Bewitchment so strong so alluring that's what sin does it's alluring amen heard said many 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 times devils aren't going to come at you for one thing he doesn't look like this <laughs> not going to come at you in a red suit with a bifurcated tail and a pitchfork red looking at you you know teeth and you know the old uh, Renaissance painting days that they make him look like this horrible, you know, this this devilish as, as suppose you know the way we look at they the way they painted these devils and demons. So they're gonna look at you, they're gonna come at you like that. So, you know, he can come at you, you know, be when you bewitch somebody, you get them under a spell. Come at you going to said, lure you everything's okay we as a church we worship we praise God sure we've taken the altar out but we still worship God we leave feeling good we leave feeling justified where's your altar call preacher well, we, we we allow people to do that themselves, you know, in their own way and at their own time and everything. So you don't have any altar calls anymore. You just pre well, your new message. What do you what do you but what do you preach? Go look at a lot of ministries online on TV. You'll see what they preach. Oh foolish Galatians, oh foolish nation, 
who hath, who hath bewitched you? <laughs> the prince of this world. The prince of the air. The god of this world. Amen. The demons. Cause him to, well, I'm not going to say that all those are un, under him and everything. They work in concert with each other. We want to make it seem like the devil's sitting there on a throne in hell and all these demons are sitting there right in front of him and, and he's got a checklist and saying, okay, you go here, you go here, you go here, you go. No, you find that in the Word of God. People have a, a very skewered view of. The spiritual warfare arena a realm both ways <laughs> but this nation actually to this very day so bewitched so out of kilter but said, well, well, we're, we're praying, but you know, we're, there's a, we talk, but what have what we been talking about here lately? Yes, God bless this. God bless you. God bless the President of the United States. And then he says, God bless America. God bless you. Uh, are we sure we're talking about the same God of the Bible? Jehovah God. God that created reality, heaven, earth. Um, let, let's get that down. Let's let's get that firm, you know, chiseled in stone. Amen. Let's make sure we're talking about the same God, for there be gods many. Let's make sure our God is the same God who sent the Lord Jesus Christ down to this planet, down to this earth. Amen. There's some that say, yeah, God bless this or God bless you. God bless. They're not talking about the same God that we're talking about. Some uh, video feeds. And I guess maybe some, because some of the research I do in YouTube is probably why that entered my feed. I haven't watched the guy or something like that, but I need to because I guess it goes along with there again with some of the areas of ministry to to help maybe end up maybe who knows maybe I will end up running into someone like this. But this guy on there is I think I'm not going to give his YouTube name, but basically he is he's a pagan Norse pagan Norse god worshiper worships the old Norse gods like Odin Thor those gods yes so we gotta be sure that's just one example when he said when people saying God bless it so okay Today you have to say, okay, are we talking about the same God here? Because I'm, I want to be sure. Of no one who I'm sitting there in concert with, and that's where the spirits will agree or disagree with each other. So you know you're in the presence of a fellow believer. Amen. But with the Galatians it says, Who hath the witch you? Let's do a comparison. Us and the Galatians here. It said that you should not obey the truth. It said before whose eyes? Some there maybe even saw before. And maybe family 
We don't know. He said, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth. Had evidence, evidently, evidence set forth. He said, crucified among you. It had the evidence. And it showed forth. Have the evidence of a conversion. If a person, especially, you remember what I said earlier in this video? Person heavy into very, very, very strong drugs and alcohol. Well, I don't think that's possible. I don't think that, well, <laughs> guess what? It is. Seen it? Her testimony? It happens. That's the power of God. Our true and living God, the God of the Bible, heavy into drugs and drinking. Every day sober for a long time, saved. Next day, no withdrawals. <laughs> No sickness, no nothing. By the power of God, the Holy Ghost working through them. See, that's what God can do. And there again, even just saying that, that's a small thing that God can do. Not putting down God or not saying that's a... But that's just a, a fraction. That's not even a, to me, that's not even a fraction of what my God, the true and living God, can do. When Jesus saves you, he, he cleans you up from the top of the head to the sole of your feet, amen. And you'll want to walk in his will. And you, you talk about someone rejoicing and glad and wanting to spread the word and help other people. See a person that, that something like a situation like that. Guess what? They're going to carry that out, and they can have a ministry right there to help others. So I was talking about those people earlier. That's happened too. But there's a difference. There, there's not a program that you got to go through that they're telling you that no matter what. You're always going to be this way. Oh, when Christ, he sets you free, you are free indeed. Now, I'm not putting down these other things and, and other people. Some people, if they'd only just get to the point where they surrender, totally surrender themselves over to Christ. He could take all that away. And the same thing. He could do the same thing for them. And the evidence would be set forth before them. They would see. See a person. Say, I just saw you a couple of days ago. And you were you were you were out of your mind on these drugs and here you are standing before me and it's like you're a totally new person you're not going to withdraw that's right and you say that's what the Lord Jesus did for me that he can do for you that's what that person I'd be like praise the Lord I did right then gain a brother or sister amen See, a lot of people follow Jesus just because of the miracles that he could perform. But see, we have to take it a step further. Yes, show what the Lord can do in a situation like that, but we also, we show him. And we give to him along with the salvation saying, look, there's more. <laughs> it's not just that you get 
healed and this stuff taken off of you guess what you got you <laughs> you you got a you got an, an eternal an eternity pack an eternal package with that you know some things things that well you go you've got you got this insurance package but also you got a vacation package with that <laughs> you've got an, you've got an eternity an eternal package an eternity package along with this right here <laughs> Verse, I'm going to skip the verse 3. Well, no, let's read verse 2. It said, you know, two more. It said, This only what I learned of you. Receive you the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Galatians kind of was in specific was having some issues. In fact, this one point is where Paul whispered Peter to his face. To his face, and you know, where people was kind of wishy washy. <laughs> wishy washy. You know, kind of, it was at one point when he was with the Jews, kind of, you know, uh, you know kind of saddling up with them and the Gentiles would come around he was kind of saddling up with them Paul said that he was to blame he wouldn't stand it for the truth now the law was a schoolmaster amen that led us and told us and showed us of what was to come even the laws that we have today based upon the things that we have in the Word of God. Amen? No, that's changed. Yes, and there's still stuff in there that is still vile that we still have laws against or help that people seem to have hmm, forgotten. No, let me rephrase that. Well, oh, no, no, I'm going to rephrase that. They've forgotten. But let me add to it. But they don't care. They don't care. Hallelujah. That we've received by the hearing of faith. The salvation message given to us. It says in verse 3, Are you so are ye so foolish? <laughs> you lost your mind. He said, Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? <laughs> Nah. <laughs> you start in the spirit, you continue on. This will profit you nothing right here. Because this is going to be changed one of these days. Or it's going to be laid in the ground. First. Remember when we called it, then it's the dead in Christ are going to rise. And we that are alive and remain will be called up together. But regardless, this is going back to the dust of the earth. From whence it came, which it was from whence it was formed. And we continue on, we continue in the spirit. Start it off in the spirit. The hearing of faith. That faith. In the Lord Jesus Christ. And it still boggles the mind. Even though we know. Even though the Word of God tells us. Gives us every, well not every detail because <laughs> there's so many things that goes on that, that we don't have that we're not Told about you know because you know things it's not it's not an all encompassing history book but it tells us a thing major that we know is coming we knew that 
and all the wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, pestilences, and all these things are coming. You know, that sin was going to run rampant. We know that the enemy is coming in stronger and all these other things are happening. We, we know this. We know just by examples. Like we're looking here. The Galatian church. Even right now we're having churches trying to go back in under the law. Now they pepper it with just a little bit after. Oh, but we, yeah, we understand. It's grace. It's, it's grace. It's grace. But the law says this, and the, and they're wanting to go back under the law. Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Now, like I said, I understand. Yeah, the commandments. There's certain. Yeah, we still fulfill a lot of the commandments. Lord saw all of this coming and if we get our noses in the word of God in our hearts and minds he'd show you more did the video last night about drawing closer to God via the wisdom and knowledge understanding getting in his word and really getting that one on one time and really really <laughs> yeah, that's getting getting into computer language here. Really plugging up and getting in, you know, in sync. Really downloading <laughs> the data from the Word of God, and you know, just and He'll give you that understanding more and more. So He said He would give it to you uh, uh, liberally. Amen. We should want that. My brother, if I know too much, I'll be held accountable. Well, don't stay ignorant of the Word of God, please. God, that we talked about, has a use and a ministry for each and every one of us. Now, I'm not saying, you know, all of a sudden, well, it could, but I'm not saying all of a sudden, you know, when you get in all and you're going to be all of a sudden called and whisked, whisked off to Africa as a missionary. If that, if some people, that's what you're scared of, that you're going to have to drop everything and it's going to be a life-altering, life-changing event. We already, if you're saved, you already have a ministry. It's to be a witness for Christ. But if God does have a ministry for you, He'll call you. He'll prepare you for it. He'll make a way for it. And you'll be happy and you'll be glad to do it. <laughs> Got a cat in here. But get, let's go to Galatians 5 and verse 1. Here's what we need to do. And how we need to do it today. Before. This worldly system. Especially right now with everything going on in the, the, this country and all the nations and everything looking at us. Galatians 5 and verse 1. Stand fast. And stand strong with your head held high. Stand fast. And movable. Amen. Stand fast therefore in the liberty I'm not talking about liberty as in, you know, as in like the flag and everything like that. But listen, stand there for, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Has Christ made you free? Said he made you free. You are free indeed. Free from what? Free from death, hell, sin, and the grave. Christ conquered all that. Guess what? That means You've conquered it all. Well, brother, I'm, I may die. Yeah. You close your eyes in death, you're going to open the other side. It's just like you're going to sleep. So I'm not intending to go into the grave and then mm, that's that's it. Oh, that's what some people believe. Amen. <laughs> that's it. We're just 
by happenstance. Another lie of the enemy. Of course, we won't get into that. That's not part of this. Christ says, hath made us free. And says, listen, and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Bondage comes in a variety of different things. Amen. Comes in a variety. People will try to make you get under the wrong parts of the law once again. Now you notice I said the wrong parts of the law. I'm talking about the Word of God. Now there are good parts of the law, like I said, that we are still supposed to follow. Oh, I disagree with that. No, I'm not talking about the ceremonial parts of the law. What about the Ten Commandments? I know Christ is talking about, you know, that we, we uh, you know, love God and love our neighbor and that those, you know, that all hinge and everything. We keep that. So we keep that part, right? The other things <laughs> in the law that we do keep. Am I keeping our spiritual walk and our closeness with the Lord that will keep all those the other things that will bring you into bondage as well as we read in the other chapter bewitchment things coming in things infiltration and people get really quiet when you talk about that especially in the church in church our church is we talk about the bewitchment that's come in the church these days it's infiltrated it. It's brought in heathen doctrine, evil doctrines. Of witchcraft, even. When I heard, you know, this is not a local church that I can remember. It doesn't matter either way. Either way. Or I knew we were in trouble when I heard there was at least one or, or a couple Sunday school classes that were using the Harry Potter books to rife with witchcraft, sorcery, wizardry, all kinds of stuff. We're using Harry Potter books to teach Sunday school lessons out of. I knew we were already in trouble, but I didn't. I, I guess I uh, underestimated some of the depth that we were getting to so I said I gotta get moving so what's wrong with that brother I got my kids those books you need to take those books out and throw them away it's introducing your kids to witchcraft and, and that it's okay to do that stuff well you gonna tell me what to do okay keep them the cursed objects Aiken. You need to get them out of your house. You need to go through your house. If you got anything even like that, get rid of them. I'm saying this under the authority of the Word of God, the Spirit of God. Anything like that, get them out of your possession. They're accursed, and you should have already known that by now. It will bring you back under bondage. And you'll be under a bewitchment. But we're not to be entangled again, the yoke of bondage, of sin, we're back under the law. Because we're under liberty now, as Christ has made us free. As we said a couple times earlier, and if, he make, if, if Christ has made you free, you are free. Indeed. Someone else made a statement to me, a friend of mine. Talking about the New Testament, when Paul was teaching about saying that we could do this and we could do that, and because of the freedom that we have under grace. I said, Oh yeah, we can even we can even celebrate pagan holidays. I said, What? But just if he was trying to justify celebrating Halloween or Samhain. I said, no. 
I said, that ain't right. I said, that's like justifying, you know, Paul telling Timothy, you know, drink a little wine for thy stomach's sake. That's like justifying. Well, Paul said it was okay for you to get, start uh, take, taking up and, you know, drinking you some beers or drinking some wine. What's wrong with that? Talk about not drinking any strong drink. Don't even let it touch your lips. People is going to argue and they can use the Word of God to justify almost whatever they want to. People, we are at a point now, as I said earlier, said at the very beginning, that people really and truly are at the point that they really, they don't care. And I think I've said this before, the person you're talking to, they would honestly, honestly just say, I don't care if there's really, and we're almost at that point, they would say, I don't care if there really is a God, if there really is a Jesus, the Holy Ghost, a heaven, a hell, I want to live how I want to live, and so you're, you might as well just stop talking to me about it. I'm going to do what I want to do, and die how I want to die. A lot of people are at that point these days. That doesn't fill me with a lot of hope. I'm not saying you should give up because prayer can change things. Prayer can change hearts. Some people may never turn away from that. Some people may never turn their hearts to God. But you still have an obligation. I still have an obligation to pray for people. Until the Lord says, hey, stop praying for them I've turned them over That's the word he says that he can turn, he's, there's some he's going to turn over to a reprobate mind there's some that their conscience is, is, is going to be seared over with a hot iron that they're going to do stuff that's going to be so some, in some cases maybe horrible that's going to be so you know so bad that, that that's not even going to bother them. actually there's some at that point now, when it comes to the abortion issue, there's some now that care less. A, a human life that they are taking, their conscience doesn't matter. It's like it, it, it's like it's seared over with the higher. So I think that point is not future tense. I think it, it is all the way. Past, present, and future. What a shame. But we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And we will, all of us, all of us, we will give an account for what we have done while we are on this world in this body. Amen. That's why I'm glad I gave my heart and gave my life to the Lord Jesus and, and repented from my sins and asked Him to save me and to come into my heart and to be my Savior. Amen. And you can do the same thing. I'm not afraid to say it. I'm a Christian. I'm not afraid to say that the Lord Jesus saved me. That He is my Lord, my King, my Savior, my God. Amen. Do I still have to repent sometimes? Absolutely. Because I'm still in this flesh. And I'll still mess up sometimes. I still have to repent. I still say we are to walk in holiness as much as lies within us. Amen. I hope 
you'll make a decision for Christ and understand why he was on that cross and he could have come down but it was it was love for you and I that kept him on that cross and he died and was laid in that borrowed tomb and that third and appointed day he arose from the grave victorious over death hell sin and the grave amen took the keys of death away from the devil amen so you can have that salvation too if you'll just allow the spirit to draw you to an altar of repentance and accept him as your personal savior just like I have done like many have done back to the Lord you know you need to come back to him before it's everlasting too late all the things going on all the whew, so much to go and do <laughs> that's that's for another video <laughs> that's for another video you start really getting hammering down on some of these things uh, not on people but on the enemy you need to get after the enemy and start <laughs> start smacking him around a little bit <laughs> brother aren't you afraid bad stuff's going to start happening he's going to start coming after you listen if you're a Christian you are already a target of the enemy so nothing will change amen <laughs> amen God bless each and every one of you blessings in Christ and Jesus on each and every one of you amen pray for one another lift one another up in prayer and uh, you know uh, let's pray for people's souls amen pray for the uh, the uh, sick and afflicted most of all except the backs of the unsaved that come to the Lord before it's everlasting too late <clears throat> excuse me and uh stand stand therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free amen and uh, pray for pray for this nation <laughs> this country this world amen uh, but you know don't be attached to this world amen we're seeking a kingdom and uh, better things to come amen after this life amen hallelujah can't wait to get there amen amen all right guys take care and uh i think that's it i always think there's something else like okay, my mind's gone <laughs> but anyway uh i guess we will see you in the next video all right bye now guys <laughs>